Okay, it is also important to understand that this exponential trends, ex this exponential behavior is also happening to many other industries. And I will just peel out one particular significant industry that will fundamentally change the way that we live our lives. And that is DNA sequencing. I don't know if you guys are familiar with DNA sequencing, that's biology. DNA sequencing is particularly, simply, basically, it's reading and writing your DNA. And the reason why this is important is that when you're able to read and write your DNA, then you can attack a cancer cell in a micro, on, on, the, on a microscopic level, and literally you can kill that cell. You can eradicate diseases. You can create crops. You can copy and paste from the genomic structure as easy as you can copy and paste from a Word file, as simple as that. So the first time they did DNA sequencing, was in 19, 1999 in a project called the Human Genome Project. It cost them $2.7 billion to sequence the first human genome ever, okay? And seven years worth of effort. So it took them seven years to sequence the first human genome with $2.7 billion. Can you imagine that? In, in 2007, that number went down to $350,000 uh, when, I mean, there was a company that started to do DNA sequencing as professional and commercial service. So you, you, you go from something that you can only do once to something that is still expensive but a lot cheaper comparatively. In 2014, that number went down to $1,000. Today, that number went down to $100. So basically what you can do today, you can send your hair to the United States of America they can extract your DNA, fully sequence it, send it back to you next day with like $100. So looking at the cost curve of, uh, of DNA sequencing, you go from something from $2.7 billion in 1999 to $100 today. So looking at this curve brings out two extremely important questions. The first one is if it is here, if the price is $100 today, how much would it be in by 2020, for example? And you ask experts, and they'll tell you that it's going, it's going to go down to pennies. So reading your DNA will be something that you do for free. And the second extremely question, what do you do with it? I mean, what do you do with reading your DNA for free by 2020? And I'll give you two examples. The first one is this. In the future, and this is not hypothetical. Once you flush your toilet, it's going to run a full genomic sequencing on everything that goes in there and will give you a full health report. Well, it sounds crazy, but, the, but this is really happening. I mean, th these people are really working on it. There is a Japanese company that is working on toilets like this. By 2020, once you flush your toilet, it's going to give you a full health report. And the second question is this. Everybody of us is losing cells, skin cells, follicle, hair. We usually tend to leave some things behind, like a gum, like a cigarette butt. By the end of my presentation today, me and Dr. Yahya, maybe, we'll hover here, collect everything that you guys left behind, take it to the lab, extract your DNAs, and then generate 3D masks of the face of everybody that was here or visited this place and accidentally some left something behind. And if you think that um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm telling like science fiction, this is kind of a science fiction, let me have you watch this video. You may want to think twice the next time you spit out your gum or drop a cigarette butt in public. New York artist Heather Dewey Hagborg might pick it up, extract the DNA, and turn it into a 3D face that could look like you. A lot of my work begins with a question. In this particular case, the question was, what can I learn about someone from a single hair? Once she finds a sample, she takes it to the lab to mine it for DNA and analyze the results. From a cigarette butt, I can learn where someone's ancestors likely came from, their gender, eye color, hair color, complexion. The information is fed into a computer program that generates a 3D model of a face. 
The way that I'm using code here is a lot like how a sketch artist would use a pencil. It takes about eight hours to print in 3D at NYU's Advanced Media Studio. Then the excess powder is removed to reveal the disembodied face from a stranger's DNA. But there are limitations, like the length of a person's nose or shape of their face cannot be determined. The faces have a general likeness. So it might look like a family resemblance. Right now, I can't determine age, so all of my masks are aged between 20 and 40. Dewey Hagbord started the project called Stranger Visions after creating her self-portrait two years ago. Now she's hoping it will raise questions about genetic privacy. It's meant to be an exploration at the intersection of art and technology and science, and it's meant to be a provocation. So it, sound, it sounds pretty wild, it sounds crazy, but this is really happening. And FBI have been, has been doing this for, for the last 20 years. So what I'm trying to say is that we are rapidly we are rapidly moving into a world that would dramatically look different than the world we've seen and felt in our lifetime so far.